in a nation covered in thick darkness a great light will shine in a people whose hearts have grown cold to the almighty god a fire will blaze in 1951 bill bright saw a three-part vision he saw that his ministry campus crusade for christ would reach the campuses of the nations of the world it happened he saw that it would produce mass media that would touch millions for christ it happened in the jesus film but what many australians don't know is that he saw a great fire of revival start in australia and spread across the pacific to america and throughout the world it's coming In the 1920s, Smith Wigglesworth, known as the Apostle of Faith, conducted phenomenal miracle meetings throughout Australia. It is reported that when he was in Melbourne, he too prophesied of the great end times revival that would come before the return of Christ. He said it would begin in the nation of Australia. In 1995, Pastor David Carthage, Dean of Southern Cross College, and highly esteemed prophetic voice amongst the leadership of the Australian Christian churches had an open vision. He saw a thick fog covering the nation. Over Sydney, it was jet black. He then saw a great whirlwind as a vortex clear the skies over Sydney and then all of Australia so that a brilliant light began to shine over the entire nation. Praise the Lord. This is Pastor Robert Clancy from Perth, Western Australia. Now, as many of you know, I've been traveling throughout Africa because of a vision that the Lord gave me about the end time revival starting in Africa and going to the other nations. And precious saints, we have just heard messages of prophecies spoken even about Australia and that revival would start there and cross over into other countries. I want you to understand that even with your nation, prophecies have been given. Prophecies have been given. Maybe you're aware of them. Maybe you're not aware of them. But any prophecy that is not fulfilled is not necessarily because it wasn't from God, because prophecies hang in the spiritual and it requires for somebody to step out and activate those prophecies that's right so your miracle even your prophecy that is hanging in the spirit but that it cannot manifest themselves until action is taken precious saints and the one who takes action commands the results because you may see a lot of these prophecies say hey how come this is not fulfilled or how come that's not fulfilled or how come this particular vision for revival never took place now when the lord showed me the whole continent of africa being revived and revival starting from there and going to the nations it doesn't mean that it wasn't from god just as it doesn't mean that this vision that smith wigglesworth had about Australia and New Zealand and the islands won't take place. But what happens if nobody takes action of those prophecies, they can hang there in the spiritual to be fulfilled and won't take place until another generation of somebody that activates that prophecy. So it's very vital for us to activate our prophecies, for us to go that step further. Now the Bible says according to Ephesians 3 verse 20, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works within us. Precious saints, nothing is impossible for God. He can fulfill anything he wants to, but it also requires faith on our part, our faith in action. We need to activate it, precious saints. Now, the Bible says, according to Nehemiah 1.5, And I said, I pray, Lord God of heaven, O great and awesome God, that you who keep your covenant and mercy with those who love you and observe your commandments. We've got to remind God of his 
promises that he has spoken in his word. Now, how do we activate these things? Imagine this. We see Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 18. He has a spiritual contest on Mount Carmel with over 850 false prophets. And we know there is a spiritual contest that took place. You have the prophets of Baal, the prophets of Ashtaroth that are in the spiritual contest with Elijah. And we know that eventually Elijah calls down fire that consumes the sacrifice. But what was God looking at? Was God looking at the sacrifice of uh, of, 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 of the bulls, or was he looking at the sacrifice of the water? Because you've got to understand the problem was there was a drought in the land. The same prophet that shut the heavens is the same prophet that also commanded the heavens to open. But the heavens to open didn't just happen easily. He had to activate the prophetic word. He had to activate it. So it required sacrifice. When we come before the Lord, we're going to have times that there are prophetic words or there's miracles or there's promises, whether they're personal prophecy, whether they are corporate prophecies. But it's up to us to do what we need to do. We need to do that part, precious saints. Imagine this. We see that uh, Elijah, all of a sudden, after he had uh, done the sacrifice, and then all of a sudden the fire comes down to receive, he still had the problem of the drought. Then suddenly, Elijah's eyes widened, and he lifted up his head, and he said, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. He said immediately, the prophet's word moved King Ahab to action because Elijah wasn't finished. He was determined to activate his prophetic words. Somebody say hallelujah. So you've got to understand how we respond to the prophetic word determines what we will receive from the Lord. It's important to understand that our doubt doesn't cancel God's plan. It just ensures that we won't be able to participate in it to the outcome that we want to see. Now, what I've said before, I said if nobody takes action to a prophecy, it can hang in the spirit and wait to be fulfilled until another generation comes, until God raises up somebody else to speak with faith. Now, as I've been going around digging the wells of revival in Africa, I've been believing for revival, just as I've also believed that revival can come to any continent, any nation, but it requires somebody that has the faith because the one who takes action commands the results, precious saints. We need to believe that God is about to do something. God is about to do something. So we see that God is speaking to us. Let's look at Elijah again on Mount Carmel. He heard the sound of an abundance of rain in the midst of a drought. However, he didn't put his life on cruise control and expect God to do the rest. We've got to also show the steps necessary for God to fulfill what he needs to do. So he made sacrifice to God. He had already taken the first step to provoking God's favor. And many people, as I said, just think it may be the animals that were sacrificed, but rather it was more the water because that water was the remaining water that even the king had left because the king was the last person to be affected by the drought pressure saints. So we see that the water was the real seed that was poured out upon the sacrifice. And we know it's true because of the type of harvest he received. It wasn't an abundance of animals. It was an abundance of rain that was coming. That was the seed of water. And it was the abundance of rain that was coming to fill, fulfill pressure saints. So as soon as he heard the sound of rain, You've got to understand that Elijah sought God. He went then to the top of Mount Carmel, put his face between his knees, and he began to pray. See, when you receive the word for your life, or you're trying to fulfill a prophetic word for a nation, you will also need to make sure that you remove 
any hindrance, anything at all that is going to stop you. You've got to go to the Lord in prayer and ask Him, consult with Him, lay prostrate before Him and ask God to bring about His plan. Now, Elijah stayed in faith. He stayed in faith even after this because as Elijah prayed, he had the opportunity to even doubt God's word and his servant was sent seven times. Seven times he sent him towards the sea to report if there was any clouds in the air. And every time his servant returned, it came back with a negative report. But Elijah had the opportunity. Yes, he could have doubted. He could have been discouraged. But God had inspired him to keep going. Elijah says, go back again. Go back again. He refused to give up. See, every day we'll have multiple opportunities to doubt God's word. Maybe you're just, even you heard that prophecy of what could happen in Australia. You doubt it because of the circumstance happening around the nation or what could possibly happen in Africa or what could possibly happen in America. But there are visions and prophecies that have been spoken that can be fulfilled if we will not give up, if we will not be uh, deterred by the different things. Now, you've got to understand that Elijah, he spoke with God. Now, as soon as the situation began to change, Elijah jumped up from prayer and continued down the prayer meeting. So now we see that the servant comes back and says, hey, there's a small fist in the air. So despite the rain still hadn't come down, but he came and started to confess. He started to speak on behalf of God. He started to prophesy and continue to speak it. You can't stop speaking it. You've got to believe it. You've got to keep pressing forward until your miracle, until the prophecy comes to pass. So Elijah continued to speak what he believed, even though he couldn't see it in the natural realm yet. So even if you have to create a set of confession habits, say what God's word says, align your words with the prophetic word and refuse to say what you feel, think or see with your natural eyes. You've got to speak by faith, precious saints. So then Elijah set himself in position for God. He gathered up his garment and prepared to run because he realized that he had to run ahead. What action of, dis of obedience is the Lord asking us also to do? Whatever's hinder hindering us, he knew he had to do it. He had to remove any hindrance so he could sprint ahead of the chariot. Examine your life today. What hindrance can you remove so that you can accomplish what God has called you to do? It's important to remember that God isn't going to do it for us. We have to take action and be a position to run with the prophetic word, precious saints. So you've got to understand that God is going to bring about his purpose. Now, Elijah, he outran the king's horses. Somebody say hallelujah. And I believe that you can and you will. You will run with divine momentum to do the impossible. Remember, if God is for us, who can be against us? Now, if Isaiah wrote, who, who, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall raise up with wings like eagles. They shall not, they shall run and not grow weary, walk and not faint. Because in the spirit, we fly before we run. We run before we walk. We walk before we crawl. In the spirit, it's the opposite. You've got to stay focused, precious saints. You've got to stay focused on the key. You need to be the one who takes action to command the results. And if nobody takes action of prophecy, they can hang in the spirit until they wait to be fulfilled for another generation. I believe there is an end time revival that is not just coming to Australia. It's going to come to Africa. It's going to come to America. It's going to come to Europe. It's going to come to the islands. It's going to come to Asia. It's going to come to South America. It can happen today. But are you pressing in? Are you activating that prophecy that has been spoken? Are you claiming all that God has for you also, precious saints? As it was when Smith Wigglesworth came to Australia, in the last century and he spoke and he said that the greatest revival would be sparked from Australia going to the other nations. Hallelujah.
Now we are looking forward to an igniting of revival because it is time for revival in the church of Jesus Christ. As it was in the book of John chapter 5, we see that an angel of the Lord was sent to stir the waters of Bethesda. And I believe that this revival is going to come with signs and wonders that will bring the lost into the kingdom of God. But before revival can come to society, it must first come to the church of Jesus Christ. So for all the pastors, all the ministers, all the workers, all the saints of God, let us come together in unity. Let us put aside all of our experience, all of our titles. Let's cast our crowns and bow our hearts and let the Holy Spirit reign because I believe he is coming with such power and such igniting of unity of faith through the bond of the Holy Spirit. And I believe that just as in the words of Smith Wigglesworth that was spoken in Australia to a pastor that came and spoke to him and said, hey, you know what you're going to see? I won't see this revival, but you will see it. So I'm believing that we are coming closer and drawing closer to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And just as I've been praying from the prayer mountain here in Western Australia, the Lord said to me, tell them the rain of the Holy Spirit is coming. And that is what I'm here to declare. The reign of the Holy Spirit is coming to ignite revival within this nation, to then go from this nation to all the other nations, to usher in the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So if you are listening to this message and you have been hanging out for revival, you've been waiting for revival to come, then I encourage you to bring an open heaven, to bring the glory of God, God within this place and within these nations. And as I've been traveling many nations, God has been saying to me, I'm going to come and hit Australia. I'm going to revive it. I'm going to stir up those waters. And as the waters of Bethesda were stirred, anybody that was placed into those waters, they were healed and they were brought to recovery. And how much more? When the waters of revival are stirred up within our hearts, revival starts with you and me. But firstly, we must be willing to humble ourselves. As the Bible says in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then I would hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will cleanse their land because my ears and eyes are attentive to prayers made in this place. If you are hungry for revival, then I encourage you. Now I want you to say this prayer. Say to God, whatever you are doing in this hour, don't do it without me. Don't pass me by, but we want to be part of this end time revival. We want Australia to be revived despite of what is happening in our governments, in society, in the changing of laws. That does not mean God is not in control because he is still in control. And as he said in Isaiah 60 verse 1, he says, Arise and shine for the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Though deep darkness has covered the earth and covered its people, the glory of the Lord is going to rise upon those that they may see the light, that they may see the glory. So now we are saying to the people of Australia, come, it has now come together together as one people for a city-wide revival. Revival, believing God is going to spark something within the hearts of people that they will go back to their congregations, go back to their churches, go back to their cities, go back to their country towns, that people may catch the fire of repentance revival as we prepare for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Shalom, shalom, shalom. 